Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Plunk Conference 2021. This is track one, and I'm here with Tiberio, who's going to speak to us about uh, Volto Slate. Uh, so, Tiberio, when you're ready. Thank you. And uh, let me share my screen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. And, uh, yep. Yeah. And, uh, okay. So uh, let's start with the elephant in the room. I'm a Vim user and I'm gonna talk to you about uh, how I built a non-Vim text editor. And um, this is a, a, a Volto add-on and uh, it was built as part of the uh, BISE, the Biodiversity Information System for Europe. And right now it's probably the most important Volto add-on. And if you're starting a Plone 6, uh, um, website with the Plone 6 Alpha, you should uh, already include Volto Slate. Um, it will it will come uh, it will be integrated. There are plans to move uh, that add-on to uh, Volto directly. So right now we're talking about uh, Volto Slate as an add-on, but in the future this will also come with uh, everything I'm talking here will also come with Volto. And nobody wants to talk about uh, a rich text editor. Right? And I'm here to talk to you about it. And that's because we mostly take them for granted. But uh, if we count, uh, Volto Slate is probably not even the fifth in line of Plono Rich Text Editor. And I can uh, recall Kupu, FCK, Tiny, Draft in Volto, and so on and so on. And um, requirements change and the web changes and even today, if I would have time, probably I might even start a Volto Slate alternative or I might even try something because you can never be, uh, be completely satisfied. Uh, but today, right now, it is the first time the Plon community, let's say, owns an editor. And I think that is important. And the consequences of that are far reaching. OK, so I'm going to give you a demo of uh, Volto Slate. And <clears throat> uh, hold on a second. Uh, this is our uh, uh, default clone website, let's say with Volto. And uh, it's it has Volto Slate uh, integrated. And by the it, Volto Slate is uh, configured as the default uh, text editor. Uh, the text blocks here, they are uh, implemented with the default implementation of the text editor right now in Volto, which is Draft.js. And uh, whenever I uh, uh, hit enter at the, at the end of a Draft.js uh, block, it's going to create another Draft.js uh, block. But if I go to the description block, for example, it's going to create a text block, uh, a slate rich text block. So uh, of course, uh, yeah, we're we're in the process of phasing out the DraftJS, but uh, I think uh, we can show, for example, the, the difficulties and and the, the differences and what makes uh, Volto Slate special, especially in the context of integration with uh, with Volto and the upcoming Plon Six. Uh, and there are like uh, really a ton of little things and and things that you might not even think about or expect or. Uh, but they come back and, and bite you. For example, um, <clears throat> just writing here some dummy text. One uh, initial key feature is that uh, Volto Slate, for example, has this uh, split paragraph uh, and not only split, but also join. And if I would do the same uh, here in the DraftJS block, I just get DraftJS blocks and no, no join. For example, if uh, let me get rid of this uh, text, and if I delete here at the end, no joy, right? If I go here and uh, to the DraftJS block, backspace, no joy, right? Okay, so something uh, else that uh, Volto Slate does and does uh, right. Uh, for example, uh, if I have a list, right, and I will create list items inside. I can have sublists and I can, uh, with tab and shift tab, I can just increment and decrement. And uh, just because Volto Slate understands Volto, for example, if I will change this line, right, the third in line, 
this list item. If I would change it as a headline, because the Volto uh, rule is one paragraph per block, this will create a new block. And uh, this block creation um, thing is far reaching. And I, I will show you, for example, what happens if I copy paste text coming from uh, another website. And uh, I, I just selected it's BBS, BBC uh, travel. It's nothing special, just a random web page. And I will paste it here. Okay, so we get one text block for each paragraph. We get the images as Volto block images, right? So they're not uh, slave, they are converted. And uh, that's a, it, it has a, let's say, magical ingredient, which is Volto block emitters. And we can do the same with, uh, uh, with tables. For example, let me move this out of the way if I can. Okay, so for example, um, I have this uh, spreadsheet, a random spreadsheet that I just have access to, it, right? And I will go here to a slate block, an empty block, and I will paste it. And what am I getting is not slate, it is uh, a Volto table. And that's because uh, Volto slate has a progressive enhancement uh, of, of content. And um, in the text block, it has specific integration with Volt. And that is, um, it takes uh, Volto block emitters, it takes uh, special functions that detect, for example, uh, structures in, in the text editor that shouldn't be there, uh, that should be, for example, the equivalent uh, Volto block, and they convert it. They convert it to a table, they convert it to a blo Volto block image. So <clears throat> that is the kind of deep integration with Volto that uh, this editor provides. And um, I've talked about uh, a little bit about uh, the, the sort of um, little, little things that are quite hard to get right. And, and they took a lot of development effort to get right. And for example, and you wouldn't expect it, if I click Right, this paragraph right right now on the center of my screen, it is not the, uh, the selected paragraph of text. But if I click inside it, my cursor should stick where I click. If I click here, it should stick where I click. And I'm sorry if you don't see it on the screen share. I hope uh, you see it on the screen share, but trust me, where I click, that paragraph, that, that selection stays there. And uh, for example, if I do the same uh, with, with the Volto Draft GS, if I click here, no, hold on a second, um, and going to the Volto paragraph text, if I click here, yeah, it's gonna. Let me just, yeah, okay. So if I click here, it's gonna move the cursor to to the end. Here, move the cursor cursor to the end. And not only that, for example, um, there's another uh, special implementation in Volto Slate that deals with uh, traversing Volto blocks, and that is moving with the with the up and down arrow arrows between Volto blocks. If I move with the down arrow, it looks fine, although it moves me to the end of the block, which is not what I would expect if I'm coming from. Uh, uh, let's say word because in word if you if you go down you go to the beginning of that block or you go to you know something more appropriate to the cursor screen position and if i go up okay now my cursor is somewhere in the middle of nowhere go up yeah in the middle of nowhere let's say and uh in comparison to uh volto slate if i uh if i go here okay Go, go down, my cursor is at the beginning of a block, and then uh, it moves to the end as it reaches uh, the limits of that, that block. And then if I go down again, it's gonna go to the beginning of the next block. And so I have consistent navigation of, uh, of photo blocks uh, with this. Uh, yeah, what else uh, we have? I mean, uh, we're, um, we have a nice, uh, proposal to implement uh, a quick uh, 
block both a block insertion i think which will come at some point and that's uh, an exciting prospect because it will make adding uh, photo blocks easier than just you know clicking here and so on but that's that's a plan right now but for example uh, you can uh, use also markdown shortcuts and they are uh, described here uh, you can do for example uh, a title so if i just type this hash and my text, right? Uh, and what else? Um, hold on. If I do a double hash and space, and now I have a headline three. Uh, and if I do, for example, um, bold, right? Okay, this is uh, not implemented, so we'll uh, just uh, carry on as nothing happened. <laughs> um, and uh, what else to tell you about it? Yeah, we do quite good uh, copy and paste, for, for example, from uh, uh, Google Docs, like um, just more or less like we do it with, uh, uh, with the regular web content. So I can copy paste from Google Doc. And another uh, nifty thing uh, which, that I can show you, and that is quite uh, unique actually to Plone because I have checked and you cannot really do that even with TinyMC, which mostly uh, behaves properly. Um, I can go here in uh, LibreOffice I have, and I have an image, I can copy it go here in my photo slate and just paste it and I will get a clipboard image and this, it is uploaded to Volto. Um, and I can do, I, I can even do, for example, um, uh, I can drag a file and I'm dragging it, I don't know if it's uh, seen on uh, the screen share, I'm dragging it from a file explorer and I get the same uh, behavior. I mean, the file is uploaded uh, to Volto. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is a ton of uh, work and features that have gone into this. And uh, it feels like there is so much <laughs> that it may never be uh, over. But uh, we're, you know, we're, we're uh, trying to offer a good uh, editing experience with Photoslate and one that is knowledgeable and that is integrated with uh, with uh, Volto. <clears throat> okay, so now I'll go back to my presentation. <clears throat> okay, so um, I want to mention uh, the people that uh, worked uh, hard and made the uh, photo slate uh, what it is today. And those are Silvio Pogan, uh, they, they are Alin Boina, Valentina Balan. I'm among one, the, them, but there are many others. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Okay, so um, photo slate is used by EA in all websites. Um, and EA is the environmental, European Environmental Agency. They were uh, the financiers of this add-on. Uh, it's also used by Plone Foundation uh, in the Plone uh, Conference website for this year. Yeah, it, it's using Volto Slate and that is thanks to Erico. Uh, but uh, there are other companies that use it. Uh, for example, Kit Concept, Roberg, and who knows, maybe others. Uh, okay, so. I want to mention a little bit about the history of this project. Um, and in my first Volto project, which was uh, Forest uh, uh, EAEuropa.eu, which is uh, the forest information system for Europe, uh, a project by uh, the EEA, Environment, European Environmental Agency. And that was back in 2019. Um, okay, so. We knew that uh, we were going to have some fact sheets. Uh, and they are uh, basically the country profiles, which is text that is intermixed with descriptions, with numbers coming from a database. And uh, we, so 
we had a lot of uh, hard numbers. They, they come from a database, but we also were, we needed to mix them with narrative text, right? So we had to provide a way for an editor to come up with a narrative text that integrates the hard numbers that come from the uh, database. And of course, uh, now with the modern text editing frameworks, that is nice and easy, right? But uh, when I started to develop uh, a DraftJS plugin for that one, I was having uh, problems, um, many, many problems. And that were not strictly related to the integration of uh, DraftJS with uh, Volto. But of course, that one also had problems, right? Nothing is perfect. Uh, so for example, the components were not refreshing, uh, the DraftJS API, I've considered it pretty bad. And I'm going to have a, an example on how that looks like. Basically not a positive experience. Uh, now, looking back, I think I was trying to push it a little bit too hard. And maybe if I just settle it on a, settled on a, let's say, lower level, maybe it would have been fine, but that as well. But uh, there, there were issues also, for example, with the final output rendering. Um, I didn't have to deal only with DraftJS, the, the Facebook provided library, but also with Redraft because the, 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 um, the final output for the final view page, let's say, it wasn't provided by the DraftJS, no, uh, DraftJS JavaScript library, but by another third party library, which is Redraft. And they have differences, they have bugs, and uh, I think this is one of the main major reasons that uh, uh, everybody is trying right now. Uh, if they are on DraftJS, they're trying to move to, uh, to Slate. Um, I'm talking about Volto community, not the community at large. I don't know what they do, I don't care. Okay, so uh, around the spring of 2020, um, I started to draft the add-on infrastructure and uh, Volto Slate uh, didn't exist at that point, right? Um, but I had the idea, I wanted kind of to, um, to explore Slate and I had the idea that, okay, uh, to be able to come up with the add-ons infrastructure and to see, to understand uh, what exactly the add-on infrastructure in Volto needs, I might create a, a toy add-on, right? So I will shoot two rabbits, let's say, test drive Slate, um, do, do the toy add-on to understand and so on. And that's how Volto Slate uh, was built because uh, once we had it up and running, we realized that it's really, really quite nice. And, um, Yeah, so basically uh, with our work on Volta Slate, we were a major contributor to the add-ons infrastructure. Okay, so uh, let's look at a little bit at the Volta Slate ecosystem because this is an add-on that, uh, <laughs> that has other add-ons. And uh, that's because it is an extend extendable framework and it allows uh, really uh, good pluggability from the outside, and uh, that's because it was created with that pluggability in mind, to be able to, uh, to extend it and to have total freedom in what it does. Uh, so we have Volto Slate Data Entity, which uh, is more or less the, the output uh, I've already shown uh, on the screen, and this is text that's, uh, that serves as placeholders and um, those, the, the final output comes from uh, data connected values. Uh, but the trick is, and that's, that's why we needed a rich text editor, that those values are rich text formatted. So those uh, placeholders that are actually human editable, they are, um, they, they will, transfer their rich text markup, let's say, to the final value. And this is uh, done not just for simple values, for example, and I will give some details on uh, the function that's, you know, the API that you have to use from Volto Slate if you're gonna try to do something similar. 
but uh, for example, you can you can have the value coming in as a list, and the elements in that list will follow the markup that is served, that is provided to the uh, to the placeholder value. And uh, this is more or less how uh, that data entity uh, editor looks like. It is uh, in the sidebar. We are able to uh, connect a particular value to a, to a data provider, we call it, but that can be a CSV file or uh, some uh, REST API endpoint serving as the tabular data and so on. Uh, also here on the screen, this is both of Slate Zotero. I will not uh, insist too much on it because uh, there will be another presentation in the conference about it. Um, it's a nice, uh, nice add-on, <laughs> and my colleague uh, Alexandru Melashan will present it, I think. Uh, and yeah, watch his presentation. And this is uh, a small screenshot of the editor of both of Slate of Zotero. Uh, but there are more, for example, Voltoslate uh, Glossary coming from Roberg and uh, Katia, Voltoslate Footnote, which is the simple version of Voltoslate Zotero, let's say, uh, just, that just in, uh, inserts footnotes and annotations. Voltoslate Metadata Mentions, which is uh, really nice, and I, can, I will just go back a little bit, but uh, see on the screen I have a choice where I can pick one of the, the metadata fields coming from the current content. For example, the title or the summary or the description or the creators and so on. So basically any dexterity field that exists on the content. And then if I go back uh, here on the screen, the word country uh, that's that's here and it's in blue, uh, highlighted in blue, that's the Volto Slate metadata mention. Uh, and it actually takes the title of the current document. So that's uh, yeah, yet another way that uh, we use templating um, and so on. OK, so now we have a, a Slate versus DraftJS comparison, just because I like beating a dead horse. And um, Slate.js is backed by a grassroots co uh, open source community, just like Plum. Maybe not to the size of the Plum community, not to the greatness of the, the Plum community, for sure. But uh, it is a, a fully open source uh, project. It didn't come from uh, a big company like uh, Facebook uh, and DraftJS uh, is coming from Facebook. That more or less has some advantages and disadvantages. But uh, for, for example, if you look at the number of stars on GitHub as a sort of indication of I don't know what, uh, Slate has more GitHub stars than, than DraftJS. And um i i want to yeah let's take a little bit and just uh, the you know comparison just for fun uh if we have um slate api used on the left and draft J, draft js api on the right and it's more or less a comparison of apple to oranges right you know but there is a certain simplicity in working with the Slate API. Uh, in many cases, you can omit the target nodes when you want to apply an operation. And Slate just uh, takes the active selected node of the editor and applies that uh, operation. And another thing that I particularly enjoy when working with Slate is the references API. You can, let's say, save a pointer, and that is the first line of code on the left. So you can save a pointer to a selection uh, or a node path, mutate the editor content, and at the end, that pointer will be kept up to date to the new address, let's say to the new value of, for example, the, of the selection, the range of uh, selected things. And on the left is the equivalent of, of the insert element logic in Volta Slate. On the right, something uh, similar just as a rough um, comparison. OK, so uh, another thing, Slate, Slate gets a lot of love from uh, the industry. And I have here a small screenshot of a pull request that was uh, done to the Slate re repository by uh, one of the main contributors to the TinyMC uh, editor. 
So uh, Andrew Heron, the spider, uh, is working on at TinyMC. It's work. It's it's an, a developer that I admire a lot, and it's it's doing uh, amazing stuff with uh, Reason ML, um, React script, and so on. So they uh, they contribute to Slate, and that is because they they use it. For example, as far as I know in the collaborative ed editor for TinyMC, and they recognize the value of, of those ideas that are in that uh, library. OK, so um, I want yet again to look at, uh, at what Slate.js is. And that is the key to under understanding what Volto, JS, Volto Slate is, because uh, Volto Slate um, is not taking a a pre-made editor and just making it available in uh, in clone. We're not taking uh, TinyMC, and which is a readily cooked up uh, editor, and we're not just making it available in portal. And that's because, yeah, we're we would just fight an uphill battle because you, you've seen how much integration we actually need with Volto, right? So um, Slate.js is a low-level library. It's not an editor, right? It is a framework to build a rich text editor. And for example, what type of elements, how they are rendered, nothing like that is defined in any of the Slate.js packages. And for example, we, we've had to implement the HTML to Slate node code, right? So that we can handle pasting. It was possible not <laughs> humanly impossible. It, it, it is done, it works quite well. You've seen it uh, in action. Okay, so uh, with Volto Slate, uh, we are uh, trying to build a superset of an HTML compatible rich text editor. And why HTML compatible? Because um, even if it's complex and we are rather deal with semantically marked up elements, uh, being so common, HTML will never have an interoperability problem. You will find libraries and tools to handle it. And external systems, for example, search engine, search engine indexing and so on, they are equipped to deal with uh, HTML output. So oh, even though this doesn't happen right now, at some point in the future, I think we should strive to, to also have and store in the database the serialized HTML markup of Slate. And it is relatively easy to do. And that's something that uh, we have on the to-do list. Um, I have here a screenshot with the H with on the right, uh, Slate JSON data structure, and it's coming from uh, the Plon Conference 2021 website. And you can see that uh, it's a deeply nested JSON structure. So each element has uh, a type and a list of children and uh, some data after that. Um, uh, there is one uh, particularity of photo slate, and I don't think I've uh, encountered it on any other uh, rich text implementation with uh, these sort of uh, node tree, JSON node trees and so on. And it's a decision that uh, we made at some point in the beginning of photo slate. And that is, um, we're not really, so in, in these JSON structures and uh, in the markup strategy that these uh, editors do, they, they differentiate between, uh, let's say, hard elements, nodes, and uh, markup elements, uh, which is uh, just something that, that's relating, related to styling, uh, bold, strong, and so on. But we've decided to stick with hard elements every time, just like DOM actually does, uh, because uh, DOM has usually just inline elements. They're not, they're not uh, just styling or markup or something, except if they are in CSS, which you cannot really, uh, you know, you cannot really use. Okay, so, um, so that means, for example, uh, we have an A, we have a link, and it has a list of children, uh, and it has a mark that is strong, right? This is not what we do. And 
because it will just get us into this problem. Which one is it? Is it strong A or A strong, right? And uh, it is important for uh, accuracy and for if you want to uh, have a, a, a complete back and forth uh, process of transformation, yeah, you, we don't do that. Okay, so uh, we've looked a little bit of uh, how a, sl a slate element looks like, and uh, this is the JSON tree for a link element, more or less pseudo code, but uh, you, you can get the idea from it. And it's a simple object uh, with a list of children and some data. The text is always a text node, and to render it is easy, and that's that's one of the keys, and that's that's so amazing, the fact that we can use any React component to render that node. Uh, and there's even the possibility of rendering the node different, uh, depending if you're in the slate editor or if you're rendering the final output. And for the output rendering, and, and when we've implemented this, it's like the, the realization of everything that uh, that we've wanted with slate chairs uh, this is more or less uh, the code that we use to render uh, node.js uh, slate uh, sorry slate markup slate json trees in voto slate and it's a recursive function we call it serialized nodes we just give it a, a list of nodes which is the voto slate um, structure json structure and it looks up uh, in each node, uh, it deter determines which element, which React component it should use for that element. And it's just outputting it, right? So this one, this will create basically uh, a tree of React components. And then we just let React do its thing. We just let React render those components, right? And if we need uh, HTML markup extracted from those React components, we can render them using uh, React DOM render to stat static markup. And uh, we've already started working, for example, on a version of a Slate uh, widget, which saves its value in HTML and which uh, re reads that back that value. Okay, so um, I've mentioned that sl uh, Volto Slate understands uh, Volto, and I've shown you some of the things that uh, it does to do that. And I'm pretty sure I've only just scratched the surface of that. And for example, uh, it will you can hit enter in a block, it will split it uh, unless you're in a list, which where it does a sub list, unless you're in a list and you're doing a headline, which would split the block. And then backspace will join blocks and we, you can traverse with up down keys and uh, click focuses blocks and so on and so on and <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm showing you, you all of this but in reality it's it was quite challenging and it, it, it is challenging and there are probably a ton of bugs but uh, we're discovering every day and and that's that's one of the yeah, it's one of the downsides uh, of doing this, but it's needed. And uh, with more users, with more uh, developers, and, and uh, having it uh, exposed to the Voto community, to the Plum community, I hope that uh, we will be able to grow in quality and grow uh, in in having like a really, really nice solution that uh, is, pro is provided with Voto. Okay, so uh, you've seen how Voto Slate takes over a Voto, and uh, that means pasting HTML, you get multiple blocks, pasted images are uploaded and converted to Voto image blocks, Google spreadsheets, and I can drag and drop in it, and so on. Yeah, this is this is this is it. This that's that's what Voto Slate is, right? And um, yeah, uh, so. It's, it was actually quite challenging to develop this feature because um, of limitations of Voto API. Um, we, we, were, we, we pushed the Voto form framework quite, uh, quite far. And I, 
I, I take a little bit of pride in the fact that we didn't require any change to the voter form framework, although we should have maybe. But you know, uh, when we started working with voters lately, the, the perspective, you know, the, the fact that it will become at one point uh, the future uh, editor for Plum Six, it was not that clear, right? And uh, for example, uh, at some point I've had to figure out how to uh, sync sync and so to to have a synchronized way in which i do multiple react set states in a parent component and so on um this is tricky maybe uh, and yeah if you're interested take a look at the source code but basically we had to, to use a react unstable batch update which was an escape hatch from react and really good but uh, yeah um with a little bit of uh, refactoring on what i think we can skip that Okay, so uh, we have a layered architecture uh, in Volto Slate. <clears throat> so we take the Slate JS framework, and on top of it, we build the Slate editor, which is uh, uh, the generic component. And then on top of that, so this generic component is configurable, standalone, and and the idea of configuration is not to cross boundaries uh, to put configuration in the basic slate editor that is only relevant to all um, text editors that are based on slate editor, right? So for example, we put there uh, a table plugin, a photo, I mean, slate text by itself in, in Volto, uh, in Volto when, when shown and expressed as a text block, will not have table. But that table will be required, for example, when we extract, when you paste a table and we will uh, see that you've pasted the table because we will traverse those nodes and then we will just yank it from the Volto block and output it as a, and convert it basically as a Volto block table. Uh, but that table needs to stay there at the, at the most basic level of Slate, uh, of Volto Slate editor, because for example, you will use Volto Slate in metadata, uh, rich text in, in, for example, I don't know, you decide that the description field uh, of your uh, content type is rich text instead of plain text or something like that, right? So this progressive enhancement is really, really important uh, for us. And, and I think it was a, a key of making sure that uh, we have a, a way to, you know, to add functionality, but not cross limits and keep it the uh, same, let's say. So we have uh, the slate editor at the base, and then we have two types of uh, text blocks, Volto text blocks, I mean, uh, the default text editor and the detached text editor. And uh, Timo was showing, for example, uh, the in in grids and in, in the grids that he's shown um, in the when there is multi -parag paragraphs of text in that uh, in those grids, it is Volto Slate detached editor, and it acts as a multi paragraph editor, and it is disconnected from um, the default behavior with Volto blocks and Volto blocks emitters and, and traversing and so on and so on, right? And then uh, we have a table block impl implementation. Uh, we have title block, we have description block. Uh, some of them are still in work, <laughs> that's life. Uh, rich text editor, HTML widget, those two. Um, rich text editor is quite, um, rich text widget, I mean, it's quite stable HTML widget. Uh, I think we're still uh, finalizing it. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned this, I won't uh, go over. Um, <coughs> so uh, we have uh, the editor configuration that I've mentioned, that we have um, multiple tiered level, we have config setting slate, that's the default uh, basic editor. And then we have config settings like text block. And uh, just to give you an idea on how that, that what level of configuration we have there, uh, this is the text block keyboard handlers. And we have a list. And for each key, we can have specific functionality attached. 
For example, uh, backspace, backspace is at the beginning of block joins with previous block. Well, that's implemented in a function, separate function. It can be, uh, you know, you have like uh, one page of code that you can reason with and you can test it independently and so on. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we, there is a lot of uh, extending and configuration, like you can add new elements, keyboard handlers, shortcut keys, photo block emitters, everything is, uh, is editable. And there is, for example, a toolbar and context, tool, um, and context, context toolbar buttons, but uh, I'm going to show uh, selection highlighting, but uh, also configurable based deserializers, which is really, really important. Maybe at some point we will decide to, uh, to make it possible to copy all the blocks on a Voto page, rendered output, paste it in Voto uh, slate, and it will automatically recreate those uh, Voto blocks. Uh, one nice, nice uh, thing about the Slate GS uh, API is this uh, idea of, of wrapping, of providing, uh, of being able to, um, to just come on top of the default uh, behavior and just rewrite it. Um, and I, I got to notice that uh, I'm running out of time. I didn't think that will happen. I'm sorry. Uh, and so, uh, this is this is one of the nice things that, for example, Voto uh, Slate provides. Uh, you can you you if you have, for example, a data entity, and you copy pay, copy the output, the, the rendered output of that data entity, and then you paste it, you get the original uh, data entity. So in this way, uh, we preserve basically the information, the, the, the inner information of those elements. Um, there is a really nice uh, framework to be able to write new, um, new types of elements. And it's, it's really easy. Uh, and, and the fact that we have so many plugins already uh, that use this framework is a testament that yeah, you can just, you have an idea, you take this API, which is really simple, and you provide the schema for the sidebar, and that's it. And, and of course, you provide the, the React component, and yeah, that's it. And the context editor that I've mentioned, uh, for example, if you have the mouse over uh, one of the, uh, uh, if you have the cursor in one of these elements, you will get uh, a little pop-up toolbar with uh, the button to directly edit the element and the button to directly um, delete the element. And that's that's just to help uh, editors. And uh, I've mentioned the uh, wrapping line markup text, which uh, provides uh, complete uh, respect uh, to, to respect the formatting from inside. Um, so are we there yet? Almost still a lot of work. I, I mentioned, yeah, there's a ton of uh, use cases and, and probably bugs. It's definitely an improvement over the existing draft JS. And most importantly, we need a written specification. Uh, Victor has already started working on that. We have something and so on. And of course, we need more uh, tests. And uh, I have a wish list uh, uh, to store uh, the value as HTML, which I've, I've talked about, uh, the quanta toolbar, uh, more normalization rules, pass down local configuration, improve the element editor, more detached mode uh, things. Uh, we need to talk about uh, migration. There is migration from HTML to Slate with uh, Erico's uh, block conversion tool. Slate to HTML, we started with uh, EA Volta Slate, DraftJS to Slate.js, uh, Erico's block conversion tool does it. And now I can pass the mic. Thanks, everybody. I'm sorry, I had to rush it uh, in, in the end. Bye bye. Thank you, Tiberio. That was really great. It's really amazing to see how much work has gone into all of this and having a modern text editor is just fantastic. Um, I would encourage everyone to go into the Jitsi to, if you have any questions or if you'd like to interact with our speaker and I'll paste that link into the track one channel. 
Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Bye-bye.